Hello, everybody. This is Alia Jamal, the love coach. We are meeting for another love circle, and I am so excited to be here. Today, we are talking about self-image, and that is core of uh, what I teach in terms of self-love, in terms of unconditional self-love. So we are going to be learning some juicy stuff today. And one, um, another thing I wanted to mention, there's something I just learned about uh, success. So those of you who think that you are a failure, there's a tiny, tiny voice somewhere in your mind that says, oh, I'm a failure. I failed in my relationship, in my career, or why I'm not getting where I'm supposed to go. Uh, I'm going to share something at the end. The reason I'm keeping it at the end, it will make more sense. So make sure you, if you don't have time right now, make sure you watch all the way till the end because it is really going to change everything for you. It definitely did change everything for me and I am still absorbing it and just embodying it more and more. So definitely watch all the way till the end and it will make so much sense to you. Now let's dig in. What is self-image? Self-image is how you see yourself. For example, let's say you're, you're about to go to sleep. This is, this is an awareness exercise. You might have to start from there if you're not very aware of how you see yourself. Maybe you're a very busy person. You never pay attention to yourself. So let's say you're about to go to bed. There's no distraction. You're just kind of slipping into sleep. And that's when you start thinking about who you are, how you are, and then you start criticizing yourself. And then you're like, I don't have the kind of courage my friend has. That is self-image. So you think or you see yourself as less courageous. Or when you're even comparing the way your body is, the way you talk, the way you show up at your work, the way you show up in your business, the way you parent, those are all parts of self-image. The way you see yourself in all areas of your life, in all aspects of your life, that, can, uh, that makes up self-image. And I, I would tell you this much, I've been working very diligently on myself for quite a few time now, um, coming close to a decade, but past two years have been more heavy focused on myself than any other year. And I am discovering more and more about myself. It seems like every week I discover, oh, this is how I see myself. And then it comes with a shock because we are not aware. So the more you're going to become aware of yourself, the more you're going to become aware of yourself. Sounds funny when we say it. So start paying attention to how you see yourself. And I would highly recommend you write it down. Have a journal that's dedicated to you and the work that you're doing within you. So write it down. How do I really see myself? Or you can just put pause it here. You can just write this sentence on the top of the page and then you just write whatever comes now. Maybe how you are seeing yourself today is going to differ how you're going to see yourself a week from today. So write whatever is coming up right now. Uh, the very first time I did this exercise, it was so interesting. The stuff that I wrote down, I was shocked that, oh my God, that's how I see myself because we are so busy in our day-to-day -day life. We don't even pay attention to. I believe I did that exercise in 2018. And very recently, I threw away those pages because all that has already shifted. But every time I write down, new stuff comes up and I become more aware of how I see myself. Now, let's get to the real uh, work and the real juicy part. How do we come up with self-image? Where does it come from? Now. All of us are going to say, um, it comes from me. That's how I see myself. But is that really true? Is that really true? Did you come to this world thinking, like, you know, let's say, let's get detailed here. Did you come out of your mom's birth canal or C-section, however you chose to come to this world, 
Did you just come out and you say, by the way, this is who I am? No, none of us did that. None of us did that. We all came here um, pure, light, love. But then we were taught who we are, who we are supposed to be, who we should be. So every single thing that you are holding on to, this is who I am, this is who I think I am, I think I'm less courageous, I think I am more courageous, I think I'm strong, I think I'm weak, all of that is a reflection of other people's opinion about you. Let it sink in because this if we don't become uh, honest with ourselves, if we really don't become honest with ourselves and we just want to stay in our head and we're just going to keep denying it, there's no growth happening. Once we give ourselves the opportunity and the chance to see what is the truth here, that is a moment of transformation. So everything we think about ourselves, somebody else said it directly, indirectly in their actions. For example, if I think um, I'm not a good mother, somebody must have either said it to me directly or in my mind, I am comparing my action to somebody else's action and then coming up with a conclusion. So still, it's coming from somebody else. It's not my own opinion of me. Or maybe somebody was talking, oh, moms who do stuff like that, they are not good moms. So I am taking it from outside of me. I really want, like, you know, if nothing else uh, you get from this conversation, that is one thing I really want you to deeply understand. The way you see yourself at the moment, unless you have done the work, you have done the inner work to claim your authority and become, become uh, you know, um, become your own authority. I think that would be the word. If you have not done that, whatever you think about yourself is coming from other people. And even if you have done the work, there is another level of claiming yourself, your true self every single day. That is what I am doing every single day where I challenge myself. Hmm, okay, if this is the opinion I have about myself, is it mine or is it somebody else? You'll be surprised 100% of the time it's somebody else's opinion. So really challenge yourself here that everything I think about myself has been influenced from outside of me. Now, why does that even happen? So let's, you know, just let's think about our childhood. When we are little, um, if you come from a big family, your parents are dealing with like, you know, five, four or five, six, or maybe even more than six kids, they need to, like for them, they need to make sure all of these kids survive. So they are going to maybe tell one child, hey, you're the quiet one. Hey, you're this one. They're going to label so it's easy to manage. Our parents are managing us. I know it sounds very um, uh, harsh when we, when we talk about it, but if you are a parent yourself, there comes a moment, if you're not very aware of what you're doing, you're literally just managing. I know when I left the hospital uh, with my son, my, the doctor told me your only job is to keep him alive from today onward, which at that time I was like, that's weird. As soon as I got home, I definitely realized what he meant. So sometime our parents, especially, let's say now you're not an infant, you're a little older, let's say you're like nine or 10 year old kid, what's happening? Our parents have their own set of beliefs. They have their own self image that they borrowed from other people's opinion. They start projecting that on us. So maybe your dad is saying, hey, you're creative like your mom. Hey, you're quiet like your me. So they start projecting that. And we're just like, oh, that's who I am. I'll just take that. Because at that time, we are not rejecting. We are not questioning our parents. Even though we are rebellious kids, still we are taking everything that's coming from them energetically in terms of their opinion, in terms of their love and care. But what we are not realizing 
that I am just taking whatever mom or dad think about me. Now, they are going to say, we are older than you. We have been in this world longer than you. We know better. We can tell who's who. We have more experience. So here, this is the title you're going to get, and this is who you are. And if that title that you received was a bit on the uh, bad side or harsh side, like you were told that, you know, you're, um, you're a failure, you can never success, uh, succeed in anything, that child is going to internalize it and live that behavior, live that pattern. It is that important. So if right now there's something in your life that, that you, you know, it's very clear your parent told you that and that's who you've been. This is the moment to realize that's not who you really are. You know, your whole body is going to reject this idea because we internalize our self-image in every single cell of our body. So when we are trying to switch it, transform it, it's going to require the effort from every single cell of our body. It's not just going to happen over here. So first, we just want to understand whoever I think of myself at the moment is not coming from me. It is coming from my parents. We are so connected to, oh, this behavior runs in my family. Oh, this thing runs in my family. We are so um, connected and attached to the lineage, the genetics. If somebody gets diabetes, they're like, oh yeah, it runs in my family. If I am eating too much, oh, it runs in my family. All the women in my family, they eat too much. We are so attached to that. That gives us safety. That gives us significance. It gives us familiarity. It gives us connection. That's a lot of needs that we are fulfilling right there and then. It's hard to disconnect from it. But my friends, if you really want to find out who you are, who you came here as, you have to disconnect that. You have to be willing to discover who you are outside of this pond. If your parents never said anything to you, who you would be then? That desire has to be there. If the desire is not there, your mind is just going to take you in circles. Your unconscious mind is going to sabotage you in ways that you won't even realize. And then you'll just stay wherever you are. Today, we are talking about self-image for success. So success can be different levels. For me, um, when I left my previous career, yeah, I, was, I would say like, you know, I was pretty successful in it. Um, I have gone like, you know, to a good level. The next level would be like, you know, managerial and whatnot. I wasn't ready to go that route anyway. But where I am now, do I feel successful? Yeah, I feel successful in some areas. In some areas, I don't feel successful. How I'm going to shift that? I'm going to work on my self-image in those areas. If I don't work on those um self-images in those areas, I stay stuck because my current self-image is running and creating that. Now, let's say 10 years from today, I become like, you know, extremely successful business owner, one of the world best coaches, extremely successful mom, maybe extremely successful wife as well. And then I decide to become a chef. That is a dream of mine, by the way then I need to change my self-image to be a successful chef. I cannot take this image and run that. Just like when I switched my career from being in the lab, working in the lab to be a full-time coach, I did, I did that work that, hey, we are not just behind a microscope anymore working in a lab. We are talking to people face-to-face -face every single day the image has to shift. But if my image is all tied to what my parents think of me, what my sibling think of me, what my friends think of me, what the world thinks of me, what 
you know, the religious and cultural aspect to it, then how I'm going to become successful? So that is what we are talking about. We are going to create an image in the direction of where you're headed. So first we have to realize whatever I'm carrying right now is somebody else's opinion. And I want to learn how to pinpoint that, how to be able to see that, hey, this is somebody else's opinion about me. Now, one of the big thing that I work with my, uh, you know, uh, personal, like the client one-on-one work that I do with them, we are so attached to, this is who I am. And in the very first or second session, uh, one of the things I tell them, be ready to discover who you truly are beyond who you think you are. We all are so attached to our identity and our image at the moment. What if all that is not true about you? What if there is a whole different side of you that you have never discovered? Because remember, we are unlimited being. We cannot be tied down to this one label. Even if you think you are an extrovert, introvert, ENFT, all those labels that we carry in different kinds of personalities, you're only that in that moment. Given that you do the different kind of inner work, you re- resolve your inner wounds, you could be a completely different person. Take the personality test again in six months, you could be a completely different person. What you're going to do with that then? Are you going to have an identity crisis then? Oh my God, I am not what I think I am. Of course, you are not who you think you are because those are other people's opinion. The reason I'm giving uh, giving you guys this whole, whole shapeel, get ready to discover who you are outside of you, who you think you are. Get ready to discover that because this desire that we all have within us to succeed and, you know, again, success could be very different in very different stages of your life and where you're headed in your life. It's going to be very different for me. It's going to be very different for you. Success does not always equal, I'm going to be a millionaire. That's not what success is about. Success is about coming in harmony with your true self. To me, that's success. And can I come in harmony being a coach? Can I come in harmony being a chef? And then you know, maybe I want to be one of the top 10 chefs in the, in the world. Maybe that that's how I define success. The more I come in harmony with myself, who I truly am, that is going to become easier. So this is, this is the part that I really want to um, drill down in our system before we go in, in any further. Because I'm going to talk about three components to build self-image for success. The reason I titled it self-image for success, you can change your self-image to be, I'm the most beautiful woman. Okay, you can be that. You can change it to, I want to be, you know, the best uh, speaker. You can change into that. Whatever, whatever part of life you're headed, whatever success you're after. Um, At this moment, I would say, what am I after? Okay, now I'm going to (laughs) share my current goal at the moment. But one of the things I am really after, I'll just share one, one tiny piece. I want to be a very, very kind, loving mother. I want to completely take out me raising my voice, me switching my tone to even harsh one, and extreme uh, and completely eliminating ever like you know touching my son either it's a slight or spank or whatever it is so those those are the levels of success i am looking for in um in just my parenting so let's just stick to that example now i have seen my mom uh beat us up like no tomorrow and pretty sure um the generation I am part of like most of us, most of us experience that. So that has been my self-image. Yelling, um, beating up kids, it's completely fine. So I have kind of borrowed that image of a motherhood, of, of a mother, one side of the motherhood. 
of course, there is that nurturing, loving, and you know that wonderful part that I saw of my mom too. But that is the self-image I started motherhood with. And the more I become familiar with where I want to go, the kind of kid I want to raise, the kind of thing I don't want to do, the self-image had to be consciously changed and shifted. And now it is at a point where I go days even without using that harsh tone. I go days without even raising my voice, which is like, you know, all wonderful stuff. It's all the hard work that I have worked on. So I want you to look at where you are headed in your life, wherever you're going in your life. It, pick one area. It could be in terms of maybe you're just starting a new relationship and you want to be successful in that relationship. And successful again would mean coming into harmony with who you are, who you truly are. Or successful could mean like, you know, you stay married forever till eternity you stay married in that relationship or you stay committed in that relationship. You could be starting a, a new business or maybe you have already started a new business and you want that business to grow and flourish. Um, it could be maybe you're switching career, you're going back to school, whatever direction you're going in. So there are three components that I believe in that I am going to suggest you to keep in mind when you're creating that image. Here's the first one, truth. Mm, let me actually change the order. So the first one would be the direction you're going. You have to write on top of this self-image for best business person or best businesswoman. Um, self-image for extremely successful, you know, CEO, um, self-image for a very kind and polite mother. You have to write where you are headed because if we don't give direction to our nervous system, we are going to be all over the place. So we want to work with one thing. Whenever you are, um, creating a new self-image for yourself. Let, let me just actually talk about that. Self-image is something you can create and recreate millions of times in your lifetime. That is where you get to choose and decide, this is who I'm going to be. And then every day you work towards being that person. Human have this ability. Other life forms don't have that ability. We have that ability. That's why you can become a wonderful singer for 10 years and the next 10, 10 years you can become like you know the best publisher or the best author that's why we have the ability to switch and manip uh, manipulate ourselves in that way but it's a good way like i know manipulate word has a bad connotation to it but this is like molding ourselves to be whoever we want to be the key is self-image and Three component to it is first one, you have to know the direction you're going in. If you're just stepping into a new career, you cannot use the past career success as like, oh, because I was really good in accounting, I'm going to be wonderful in computers. It does not work that way. Yes, you are bringing that um, personality trait, hard work, dedication, persistence to this new career but also the self-image has to be created. If you do that, it's going to be much easier of a ride. Okay, so the first one is the direction you're headed. The second one is true. So you're going to continuously keep asking yourself, what is the truth in this? Is it really true? So let's say if I am working with the example being a mom, so you know, one of the thing would be, well, if you don't um, raise your voice, the kid doesn't listen to you. Is that really true? Kids actually respond so much better when the tone is polite. I know this myself, and I have been there where I would raise my voice too. So let's say if you're switching your career, you're just starting a business, and now you're going from being an um, employee to being an entrepreneur. When you are going to look at yourself, the image, 
you're going to be so many doubts. There are going to be so many doubts. There are going to be voices of your family. Can I really do that? So that is where you're going to ask yourself, is that true? Of course you can do anything. You're a human. There's so many humans who have done that. You have the same ability within you. Of course you can do that. So whatever you have written down, this, this is how I see myself start questioning each and every statement. Is that true? Is that true? Is that true? And if, it not, if it's not true, then write the truth in front of it and make that as your self-image. One of the truth can be that I can become whoever I want to be. That is a truth. You can just write that and you can use that as your guiding line, how you're going to see yourself from this moment on. So for example, if I want to be a very kind and polite mother, I'm going to start seeing myself. I'm a very kind person to everybody, not just to my friends, not just to the outsider, but also the people who live in my home, the people who live with me, and that would be just my son. I'm a very polite person. So I'm going to keep reminding myself that I'm a very polite person. I'm a very kind person. I think before I answer, I check the energy of the room or I check the emotion of my son before I even speak. When he comes home, that is a very, uh, uh, like, you know, any transition that is happening in, in a child's day is a time to readjust everything. So it is a difficult time for them. And they just leave the house, they go to school, they just come home. If I see myself as a person who tune into the situation before they go on, like, oh, this is all the things that you have to do next, then I'm going to start behaving like that. So let's say, uh, take another example of being an entrepreneur. If you see yourself as a lazy person, that has to change. That self-image has to change. You will start seeing yourself, I finish every task on time. I do not procrastinate. Now you might be thinking, hey, Alia, but don't I have to work through my procrastination issues? Yeah, of course you have to. Of course you have to. You have to dig down why you're procrastinating. But if your image changes, if you start seeing yourself as the person who's diligently finishing their task, you speed up the process. Maybe you're not going to start working with an expert, a coach to really dig deeper and you know, dig out why you're procrastinating, what's going on in your own psychology and in your internal world. Let's say you don't do that. As soon as you become an entrepreneur, you're thinking like, you know, okay, once I start making money, maybe two, three years down the road, that's when I'm going to start uh, hiring help for myself. If you start with the image, I'm a very diligent person. I finish every task on time and you are seeing yourself that way. That alone is going to shift how you're going to show up. Self-image is so powerful. This is almost like we are putting a program in our system hey, by the way, this is who I am. And our unconscious starts responding to that. But of course, when we are switching it, we have to uh, do it over and over and over. I have to remind myself every single day who I am going to choose to be today. In fact, there is, a, um, there is a, I'll call it a ritual, uh, but there's something that my current coach, David Nagel, has recommended us and suggested us and that we all do is call Sacred Seven. So in the morning, there's seven questions you're going to answer before you even start your day. And one of the questions is, who am I choosing to be today? So that is self-image. That is self-image before you even get out of bed. You start implementing that you're going to start seeing a huge difference in your own success in whatever you're working on. One of the examples I'm going to give, for example, let's say if you are um, like, you know, just a staff employee right now and you want to become a manager, you want to become a lead or however um, the hierarchy is in your, in your field, 
start seeing yourself as that higher person. Start seeing yourself as the director uh, of your department. Once you start seeing yourself, oh, today I'm going to show up to work as the director of my department, you are going to feel very different. And I can tell you very soon, you will be in that position because the energy we, uh, we completely forgot the word, the energy that's coming off of you as you are walking into, wor into your work is going to impact other people. They're going to feel, oh, she's a director material. What she's doing just being here. You're going to see yourself going up the ladder. And by the time you get there, you're going to be so confident because, hey, you've been imagining yourself or you've been seeing yourself being in a director position for a couple of months now. So it's already feels like it's yours. Every single position, every single um success let's just use that term for for this conversation every single success you're after it has its own energy once you start seeing yourself as that person you became one with that energy and when you step into that position you are already in alignment with it that's how self image can do magic in our life it can literally do magic if we are willing to use it every single day. The problem is most of us, we are so busy to even stop and think, how do I see myself? We're just running, running, running. So take a pause, my friends. Take a pause. Look at yourself, how you see yourself. Start changing that and your life is going to change so much faster. The third component is, uh, which really changed everything for me in the past few years. And that is see yourself how God sees you. Now, this might feel weird for some of us, but give it a chance. Give it a chance to really look into it. How does really God sees in you? No matter what cultural, religious, uh, background you come from, if you don't believe in a God or you use the word energy or universe, how do you think universe looks at you? How does that unlimited energy looks at you? So I'm going to share a quote with you guys, which has been my guiding light. And this is a quote that goes to, goes on the notes of my clients. Everyone has it. And this is the guiding light we use, how we're going to start seeing ourselves from this moment on. Okay, so here it goes. The truth about you is so lofty. So the truth about you is so lofty that nothing unworthy of God is worthy of you. So whatever thing you think that you got, for example, you think like, you know, maybe your legs are a little fat or crooked or whatnot. Is that how you would see a God? No, you won't. We all see a higher power in its perfection. So then you have to see yourself in your perfection too. So nothing unworthy of God is worthy of you. Choose then what you want in these terms and accept nothing you would not offer to God as wholly fitting for him. So if you're not going to tell God that, you know, you're such a terrible mother, you're not allowed to say that to yourself either. If, if you make this quote your best friend in terms of how you're going to see yourself from this moment on, only see yourself as God sees you, it is going to change your life faster than you can even imagine. All areas of your life. People are going to start treating you in such a wonderful way that you'll be like, what just happened? This person used to be really mean to me. This coworker never talked to me nicely. And all of a sudden, they are nice with me because the way you're seeing yourself is shifting. So the way everyone else is going to see you is going to shift too because that's how your own energy body is shifting. That whole energy is shifting so other people start mimicking the energy that you emit. That was the word I was looking for before. 
So when I start seeing myself as God sees me, he sees me with a lot of love, more love that I can even imagine. So can I start seeing myself with that much love? Is it possible that other people are going to start seeing me with them, that much love? Does God see me as already successful person, as a successful mother? Can I see myself as a successful mom? Can I see myself as a successful entrepreneur? Because that's how God sees me. He only sees my perfection. Can I see my perfection all the time? Now, that's where we'll be like, oh, but then how I'm going to improve? We are always evolving. It's impossible to not evolve. And especially when you're looking at yourself from the eyes of how God sees you, you, you're going to evolve even faster than before. That love, that nurturing love that you're going to look at yourself with is going to change you faster than any kind of criticism, shame, guilt can ever change you. This is my promise to you guys. You practice this. I promise you, your life is going to change faster than you can even keep track of. So I'm going to just recap that we are building the image for success in life. When we are building that, first we put right in front um, where we are headed, where we are headed in life, that we are building this image. And then all the things we think about ourselves, are they really true? And what are the truth about them? And then start looking at ourselves, like how God would look at us, look at us. So those are, those are the components that are going to help you create a self-image anytime you need to upgrade your self-image, you need to change your self-image because you're changing the direction in your life. For example, one very quick example, I do talk to a lot of women who go through like, you know, heartbreak or they are going through divorce. So let's say, you know, you have known yourself as a couple, but now you're a single mom. Maybe you're just a single lady right? The self-image has to shift. And it has to shift to a good one, not a bad one, not like, oh, I was a failure. That's why my relationship didn't work out. That's not true. Life was just going in a different direction. You just said yes to it. So in that moment, if you change it from like, you know, being with a married couple or however life was before to being a single mom, and you want to be the the best single mom that you can be to your kids, to yourself, and to contribute to this world, that self-image has to be created now. And if you don't do that work, it's going to feel like you're dragging yourself. You're dragging yourself every day because the self-image matches to a year ago, life has completely shifted, and your self-image has not shifted yet. Do this work, you're going to see such a big difference in how you feel every single day and towards the progress progression of whatever goal is in front of you. So now let me talk about um, this concept of no failure. So uh, most of you do know that I, uh, my current mentor and coach is David Nagel and I'm in this program where we meet every single day on Saturday and Sunday as well. This has been my two years with him and the third year is going. So I learn a lot of stuff. Every single day he teaches, takes one um, concept and he teaches, does like, you know, 15, 20 minute teaching around that. So today we've learned about there's no failure in life. I have learned that concept before. I have heard of it, but I never understood it the way I understood it today. And it's, it's like my, my world is shifting and changing. I am not seeing anything as I saw as I woke up this morning. As of 9 a.m. of my time, my world has completely transformed and changed. And that is the beauty of the inner work that we do. Okay, so you might be like, Oh, Alia, but you know, I failed. I, I even failed in college. There is failure. So when we look at life, for example, I'll take the example of a, of a relationship. Uh, I'm the love coach. I help women 
fall in love with themselves. So most of them are coming from like, you know, um, a breakup. They have had like, you know, um, difficult intimate relationships. So we think I failed in relationships. In nature, in universe, there's no failure. Life is always moving in the direction of more. It's always going for more. There's no like, oh, life failed today. There's no life failing. Life is always moving for more. What I am creating in my life, what my results are in my life are based on the pattern, um, the paradigm, or the beliefs that I am holding in my subconscious mind. So when I feel like I failed in a relationship, what that is, I lived a pattern, a behavior pattern. In my life, I, I just lived it, but the result was something I didn't like. Maybe I had this belief in my life, my relationship is not going to work out. It is so hard to have a beautiful relationship. Oh my God, what if, my, what if I get a divorce? Maybe I had all that in my mind and the only thing that has happened, I have successfully lived that, but the end result, I don't really like. I am judging the end result based on the society and the current environment I am in. So I label it as failure but there is no such thing as failure. If we want to change the results that we have in front of us, we have to shift what's within us. But we cannot say, oh my God, I failed. I need to shift the pattern within me that's making me fail. There's no failure. The energy that moves through us every single day is just helping us live. It's just moving us forward whatever path we are on, without judgment, if we don't judge the outcome, and if we just look at everything just the way it is, then we can shift so much easily. So what I learned from this uh, teaching today, I, I hope I've been able to explain it to all of you in a wonderful way, and you do understand it. What I learned today, I'm always successful and you know that is a that is a new belief that has been created today imagine the wonders it's going to do the little tiny you know critical voice the voice of others the voice of judgment that has you know always been there we just learned to not pay attention to it kind of went poof for a few seconds I don't know if it will be back but I am just living like I am successful all the time, even if I don't like the results. But successfully, the patterns that are within me, they are living every single day. But once I start looking at myself as success, a very, like, you know, my, my inner world is just expanding because there's no constriction on it. There's no, there's even less of a judgment on it. So that is the opening. Um, it's, I hope it creates within you too that, you know, there's no failure. Make that part of your reality. Make that as your self-image. You never fail. You only succeed. It's just a matter of the result you got. Maybe you're judging it. For example, if I start judging myself as like, you know, the way my relationship went, I'll be in tears pretty soon. But I always look at it. I have learned to look at it because I have trained myself to look at the beauty in every single moment. I look at it and I'm like, it's one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Now, with this new understanding, I can apply that to every single area of my life, even the parts where I'm still growing and it doesn't fully make sense yet. I can apply it to those parts. And I can apply it to anything that I'll be working through in the future. That is mind blowing. I hope your mind is blown too. And I really hope that you can implement it 
in your life. You can internalize it. You can make it part of your life. And you can create that self-image that only takes you in success all the areas of your life, whenever you need it, wherever you need it. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If you're watching a recording on YouTube, you can just Google Ali at the Love Coach. And for rest of you, you know where to find me. If this is something that you want to work on one-on-one, I would be so glad to take you through that process. I am so happy and excited for you. Reach out to me. Let's get on a call. And I'm looking forward to work with you. And I will see you all next Thursday with another Love Circle topic. Sending you lots of love. Bye.